traffic on it and you'd see how it worked. And then uh, Commissioner Hather was quoted in Phillipsburg Mail as saying the millings are junk. Okay, if they're junk, why did they get put on the Maxville Road? Are we going to have to pay to get it torn up, removed, and other material put in? I guess that's a question you guys need to ask yourselves. Um, and if Commissioner Adler did this stuff in front of everybody and it was going to be okay, but he got caught, so now he's facing this. What else may have been done? Maybe the Attorney General should check into that. And uh, the apology in the Phillipsburg Mail does not remedy the solution, it's an admission to guilt. Uh, so can any of the people in here, any taxpayers in that, go up, get county equipment, take it, use it. If you get, if you don't get caught, fine. If you get caught, say, okay, we'll just pay for the hours we use. It's not breaking the law, I guess. And then, um, the commissioners putting the county crews and everybody in this position. What does that do to them? Does that, I mean... They probably knew it was wrong, but were they fair and that something repression may happen? If they said no. Because I'm sure it's in the handbook, you're not supposed to be doing this stuff. And then, uh, I guess my end thing there would be this bullet that maybe the county uh, employees should be questioned by the attorney of January in person so he can get the information of all the stuff that has been done. So that's all I have. Thank you, Dan. Is there anybody else? Yeah, I'll go next. So a lot of the 
the things he already pretty well touched on what I wanted to ask. But when you guys said there was being a test done, you know, so I talked to Mark Tag. I called him up. I said, Mark, half that pile is already gone. I said, did you guys just throw it over to the bank? What would you do with it? He said, no. He said, we actually put it on the road, Charlie Parks's. We built up a bunch. We did some on uh, Berlantic's Road. We put some up Bear Gulch. He said, we tested the mulching machine that was in question. He said, I ran two machines. I reported to the county commissioners that worked fine. It broke everything up. I guess I'm... I guess I'm I can't figure out, so why wasn't that enough of a test? Uh, when we had the flood, you guys used the exact same material, same pile. You did a stretch road up Maxville. It looks beautiful. Danny used the mill and Mark Mills machine on it. And I just don't understand where this it looks like to me. It was just for personal gain. Well, let me, let me, well, let me, let me answer that, okay? Because so, it was stated just a minute ago that the same buildings were used in Maxwell, that's not true. There's two piles of buildings, one on this end of the county yards, or the state yards, and one on the other end of the state yards, okay? And the one towards uh, Drummond uh, is the oldest pile of buildings, big chunks of it. And that's why they all got maxed And we, even with Mark, we we just didn't use it. No, that isn't what we hauled Maxwell. We hauled the Maxville, the, the buildings on this end, which we always knew were pretty good. The buildings that was explained to me, Paul said, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I don't know if I can mix them. I don't know if I can uh, rejuvenate them or not. I actually, this is the, uh, so we, that's why we did the test. We've actually had people come in, you know, for free, uh, saying, okay, you're going to mix it with this or that. And, and the uh, mixing agent was so expensive, we said, no, these are, this is when I first started years past. So that pile's been sitting there, Lawrence on the uh, uh, north end of the yards for a long, long time and unusable. And Paul wanted to figure out a way to use it. Well, it just has. Really? Yeah. Now, so the stuff just... on Maxville, if you go look at the pile on the, on the south end, uh, it's... And you just finally touched that we're... a week ago. You had never taken nothing out well, of that Well, we had tested. We knew touched. it wasn't going to... You're talking about the pile on the... The south know. end down toward Richards, guys. It had no, never we, been we, anything we knew, taken no, out. No, we knew that was good, Bill. Bill, I watched your loader running it through a grizzly and hauling a dump truck the up the max. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. On the north end, the stuff that was junk. No, the no. stuff didn't disappear. No, no, the, well, not the stuff that, as far as I know, all the stuff that went to Maxville, unless he mixed some of it, was uh, the stuff we knew were going to be good. No. If you go into a pile, you can tell when it's been hauled out. Well, Lawrence, I was, you're right on that. They took the rest of that out of there, and they were mixing it, bathing and loaded, and dumped it in two different spots up there, and then brought that other in, but you are right. Well, I'm just saying, I, he could have mixed know. it, you know, but what I'm saying is we knew the millings on this end were going to work, but we didn't, the other ones were trying to figure out how. That's how it was explained to me. And they said, you know, we, need, we want to test it. Look, it doesn't make this any better just because we were testing it. And, you know, to Mr. Villa's comments, you know, like, I don't know, fire department or something like that. They didn't want to do it there. And they just wanted to do it on a county road and make some mess, and we'd have to deal with it. But, well, I, just, I guess yeah, I just yeah. don't understand why you need to do a test when you'd already been using it, I mean. And then on the one little thing, it had some environmental stuff you wanted to know about water and stuff. Well, you've been using millings for years. There's not really a whole lot of difference because old millings or new millings is still all the same. So you've already been putting it on the road. So all that was kind of a little patch up as far as I'm concerned. But uh, that's basically, you know, a lot of it. But there's other things that I'm still kind of waiting to hear about. So I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? I'll say something. Me? My name is Beatrice Pitcher, and we're taxpayers at Grand Company. And when I read that article in the paper, I was so appointed that made me come to this meeting and tell you that, uh, you know, I live in Anaconda, and I know how corrupt that government was, I, and I th always thought that you guys were way better. When Mr. Wobbling and Mr. Martin were commissioners there, they were fiscally responsible to all of us. 
and I thought that you that we were continuing to do that and we can't allow you to be that corrupt. I think that you should resign or you should just do something, but we we don't want Granite County to be run with like the other governments. Well I have to say something here, Beatrice. Uh, you know, I was I was sitting here that the original discussion came up with the uh, road department supervisor and these two co two commissioners. I was sitting here talking to uh, uh, Blaine with a couple other issues, dealing with a couple other issues. And uh, uh, I, I've i worked for government for 55 years and that was a wrong choice to make. I just wish that Bill would have leaned over and and tap me and says, we need you here for a minute, and I would have instantly said, absolutely not. Uh, there's, I mean, I, I agree, I mean, and we talked about it, the three of us, and I, we, we all three agree that it was a dumb, it was a dumb move. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, it's four weeks ago now, and so, I just don't have anything else to say. Um, is uh, is there anybody else wants to? Uh... Yeah, there was somebody over here. I just had some questions on, uh, about uh, Paul Alt um, and uh, giving away a county water tank. I don't know, I heard that, whether it's true or not, I don't know. And then uh, I heard he's leasing his own trucks back to haul gravel for the road, and I don't think that's right if that's true. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know if all that stuff, you know, I mean, you just hear people talk, and it isn't like you go looking for it. They just say, did you, did you hear this? And then uh, is Nikki Cycle working for the county now? Yes. I heard that they hired him back, his tractor, you know, to do work. He was doing some work with something up on the Maxville Road. <clears throat> they hired Nikki's tractor back. I don't know about that, but I, I can explain the whole uh, trucking thing. Uh, Paul went through a uh, process where he had to submit a resume and there were four applicants. We interviewed all four applicants. Paul was the finalist. Before we offered Paul a uh, employment and negotiated his salary and all that stuff, uh, he told us, he said, well, I've got some things I need to tell you that you know may or may not qualify me to work here. He said, uh, I own operate trucks in this county. And uh, we said, well, you know, what we'd like you to do is to lease them to somebody else. Okay. Because you can't be the road supervisor and, you know, do similar work. He did that. He leased them to uh, Bob Weaver and uh, I think some other equipment as well. Uh, when the fires start more up here, uh, we uh, had the opportunity to, to, to force <coughs> several thousand dollars worth of material that we were going to put on the road to try to save the road. And it was an opportunity for us to get... Uh, when the fires are gone and they leave, we get, we get to keep the material. So Paul came in and said, I need to hire some more trucks. And we, you know, we asked him to do it local if he could, and he said he would. Uh, and that's actually where the, the truck, the uh, tractor, tractor uh, was leased, was belongs to Paul, and leased, and that act, tractor was actually pulling the truck up here. But, you know, that's what we agreed to do. We said, if you lease your stuff out to somebody else, and we actually hired that person back at some point. And frankly, it was the only uh, belly dump he could find. So he uh, called and made, you know, it was a total different transaction. We paid that like any other contract. I mean, there's 3,200 people in this county. And one thing we try to do is use our local contract as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna have a situation like that once in a while. So I mean, that's how we dealt with it. Um, John 
whether you know one of, the, one of other options go to Missoula, you know, uh, or, or, or somewhere else. And, and, and so what he wanted was a belly dump, and that's where we got it from. But the truck tractor was, as my understanding, was Paul's. Right. The belly dump belonged to somebody else. Yeah, Charlie right. Parks. And all of it leased to Bob. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. So do you actually have the contract? The lease contract? Bob? Yeah. Sure, because we have to make sure he's got insurance. And like if we hired you, Lawrence, we, have, we ask him to bring all that Well, I was kind of told at our little illegal meeting that I couldn't spread gravel on a county road with a dump truck, so I didn't ever really even have a chance at it. <laughs> well, I don't know about how legal our meeting was. We had a discussion with Lawrence about some of these very issues, um, and uh, certainly it became clear to me, you know, like Bart said, how dumb this idea was. It was not. So was, was Bart and, notified and that, the, make, that you know, two of us were meeting? Huh? Was Bart notified that, that two me, that Scott and you were meeting with yeah. me at the county yeah. shop? Yeah. yeah. I was, but I was, I came down here to uh, uh, sign some checks and then go out to Myers Fire. I was requested to be out there. Okay. Anyway, before we get everybody confused, I'm sure you're wondering, I don't know how a goofy idea like this gets out. There was a conversation between Commissioner Adler and the county road supervisor. Right here. There was a conversation between the county attorney and Bart right here, and I'm kind of in the middle trying to keep up with those conversations. It, there's nothing in the minutes because we, we didn't make any formal action about how we're going to test these buildings. But I'm Picking up that before we put this stuff on Maxville Road, we got to make sure they're going to work, especially that pile on that end. Were we going to do that? There was a conversation, and I, I have to admit, I heard uh, Paul and Commissioner Otter say, Well, you know, you could come down and dump in my yard, you know. And I, I hey, I must, I've been in this business a long time, I knew that was stupid. I was like, No, it ain't going to work. But, uh, and here's where I did make a mistake. Uh, as this thing progressed on, I didn't find out where they were going to go to do their testing, and I, and I, and I didn't do diligence. And, uh, frankly, Paul and I were working with the foresters to try to get paid. They owed us 73000 bucks, and it looked like they were going to back out. And, I ended up, and we were calling every day, every day. I ended up in Senator uh, Daines' office to get paid. But, uh, different story. And that's not an excuse. Uh, I could have said, no, Scott, we're not doing that. And I'm sure he wouldn't have done it. And I know if I'd have said, no, Paul, we're not doing that, I know it wouldn't have got done because Paul works for us. And what we tell him to do, he does. So he really, this isn't Paul's deal. This is us. This is between the public and us. We decided, I mean, I don't know, quickly, which is like a really dumb thing. And uh, we decided to make a formal apology for one reason. We didn't want you to think we were keeping anything from you. We did it in the paper as quickly as we could. When people called me, I didn't back off. I said, yep, you're absolutely right. That was the dumbest thing we ever done. And we're going to do what we can to make it right. But we're not going to lie to you about it. So there you go. I got a question. <clears throat> What did I read in the paper? State your name. I'm Andy Weaver. Okay. I lived out in Barramount. I saw in the paper a while back that well, you put some millings out, I'm assuming, on a public street up here in Payburg, and then you were sued by a adjacent landowner. Was that the same millings that are being discussed here out of the same pile and yeah, stuff like that? I don't know if it was or not, Andy, but it's out of town. What we did is we put some, was it millings or was it? It was millings. Millings, yeah. yeah. And it, uh, yeah. whatever they put on them and ran off and they were trying to do them dry and see the wet. Well, to me, it seems like <clears throat> I know a little bit about millings, a little bit about road work. I've been around it quite a bit. It seems to me like you take millings out summer and you put it on a public road and you get sued for $42,000. Why would you want to take the risk of putting them out somewhere again and take a chance of being sued? If you got somebody that wants to take them, get them out of there. I'd say get rid of them if they want to take them. I'm sure it costs less to haul them down there than it would be. I'd rather do that than be putting the bill for another $40,000 lawsuit, maybe more. 
That's, I was kind of wondering if they were the same millings, or did they ever test them to see what kind of chemical or came out of it? It was when we put the mag on that they mixed with them, with the oil in the mag, and the runoff killed the trees. Hmm. So this way, they just thought we just throw the water and hard water. And it was a bad idea. I admit it. I really screwed up. So if that's the case, why are you putting bag on the road still with the millings up Maxville when you're running along Boulder Creek? Because they took them out of that other pile there, and then that one pile they left them down lower is what they said. We still to this day don't believe it was due to the fact that that's what the insurance company come back with. For the record, Susie Brown. Um, just listening, um, I have a couple of questions, and this one is for Scott. I would like to know what equipment and who the county employees were that spread the millings on the driveway. I've heard various things, so I'd just like to know, was it, uh, who was involved? Who were the employees that? Jim, Kyle, Brad, Nick. So four, four guys. Paul wasn't down there, the supervisor, the road supervisor? He was there on and off. On and off. Were you there? Yeah. And what equipment was used? Tractor and a that mulcher, uh, one water truck, a roller. Totally. Is this the first? Dozer. Okay. Is this the first time that you have used a piece of county e equipment? No, I've used stuff over at my shop there and load and stuff. Same as uh, not, you know, right there where I have my shop branded. No, I've used that loader and load. Stuff no. So you used county equipment for yes. personal use? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, I have a, when did you sign the lease contract with Bob Weaver? Yeah. Well, just one job we did. It was the four surgery by now. Was it, I, I just noticed there was a lease um, agenda item last week on last, uh, no, long, long, long before that? Yeah. And so how long does this contract run? This job, it was just for a job. And one job. Yeah. One job. Okay. I know. Uh, did we use him on the upper road trip too? We made maybe two jobs. It was okay. during the Forest Service rebuild of the roads. Uh, you know, had all those trucks and stuff on the road. They were hammering our roads. We had an opportunity. They said, we'll pay for material and bag. The uh, county road supervisor went out with the Forest Service people, uh, and they got it. And I, I don't, I don't have a problem. I just wondered if, you know, when the lease was done or the contract and yeah. how it read. Yeah, it, it, just to be clear, it's this a is not a long-term contract. It's by the job. By the job. Yeah. Each time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I have another question for Blaine. Uh, why did it take so long to contact the Attorney General's office? I mean, I've heard this happened four weeks ago. You know, I don't have a, don't have a no. reason. I guess uh, I, uh, I would say that's a few weeks. The Attorney General's office will look at it. I guess I disagree that that's a long time. Okay, okay. Um, and, but you will pursue it. The, the letter, letter is sent, yeah. yeah. Um, Another question for the commissioners. Um, has Paul Alt been written up for this? No. No. Have you? And, well, there's a reason. Okay. She, he, well, he was, was, hold on one second. Uh, uh, a uh, employee, that's a, that's a private employee personality. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll rephrase. Um, was Paul Alt given a copy of the personnel policy when he was hired? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's okay. Um, <coughs> I believe that there has been official misconduct here, and I definitely think it needs to be looked into. Um, I know of one commissioner in Macomb County 
that did this kind of the same thing. And he had felony charges brought against him. I don't know if it went to trial. I do know that he did resign as a commissioner. I also think that Paul Alt is on a probation period, and I think the commissioners should um, take a serious look at that. Um, I think when he was hired, the minutes when I read them, I think that Scott Adler should have abstained due to a conflict of interest. I don't know that you should have participated. Because you have had business dealings with Paul Alt before, and I think uh, just to protect yourself, you maybe shouldn't have done that. But that's my opinion, and I'm just going on the record as saying such. So, let me reiterate. Uh, there is a code of ethics. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I'm not arguing. I'm okay. just saying with respect to uh, Supervisor Hall, he works at the pleasure of the commission, at the direction of the commission. Anything he did in this incident was at the direction of the commission. Okay, so he is our employee. If we asked him to go stand on a highway one for eight hours, I guess he'd have to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I don't think Paul, in other words, uh, the, mis the mistake, or whatever you want to call it, was made by us, not by Paul. Okay? Okay. I understand what you're saying there. I mean, I think we'll take responsibility. I, I will take responsibility as a commissioner uh, and, and this mistake and not, you know, not stopping it. But I don't think Mr. Hall is, he's just working at the direction of the commission. I think that'd be unfair to have him involved in this in any way. So, there you go. Thank you. Go ahead. State uh, your name. Jerry Coon. Coon with a K. Uh, I guess we beat up the driveway issue, and there's lots of comments on that, so all I can say about that is I prefer bad millings to poison patch mud any day. Uh, but my comment's more on the mag chloride issue. Uh, every year it seems like come the wet season, we get around the mag on the roads. We choke on dust all summer. Then come late August, September, we mag the roads, and then we get moisture on it. It draws moisture anyway, so now we got slime and corrosion on our vehicles. Why don't we mag the roads in the dry season, June, June July, so it lasts through the summer, and then you let the moisture take care of the best in the winter. And the same issue with uh, mag chloride on Maxville Road. Uh, we magged it few weeks ago and then you put expensive millings right over the top of the mag. So either the millings were a waste or the mag was a waste, one or the other. A lot of dollars going down the drain there. Well, I asked that question too, Jerry, and basically what I was told is that the mag on the first one was to make a base for the millings. They always, he'd always planned to put the millings on. And it was a better base, and good and hard to put that on. I don't know. I mean, I, you're talking to an old cop here, not a road guy, okay? So I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying that was the reason it was given to me, okay? The other thing is you're absolutely right. Uh, first of all, you know, Paul gets drinking. He started the first day here drinking out of a fire hose because he was in the middle of a flood when we hired him, and he was actually going around filling county roads that washed completely out. So we were at least two weeks behind on when we should have been uh, great roads, especially down here. Then the forest fire started, and the opportunity to get uh, a bunch of materials that we would never have been able to afford on Moose Lake Road and then Upper Willow Creek after that set us even further behind. Was it a bad decision? And then 20, you know, I mean, I, I hope next year you're right. We get well, I understand the flood issue. Yeah. Yeah. Before, yeah. So this is another deal. But, but then, we'll see but what I'm saying? Last, right. we last year you did the same thing, and the year before that. Seems to be the same thing every year. We'll try not so. to next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, You're right. then, and then I understand you put in a, a big culvert. Spent several days putting in a culvert on a Forest Service room north of Princeton or east of Princeton. It would be. Why would you waste time on a Forest Service culvert when county roads are in dire need? 
That actually, that is actually County Road, but it's non-maintained. It was the one above Max Noise talking about. So. One of more stuff. Yeah. More stuff. Yeah. I guess you talk about being behind. So what we're in the Granite County has always had two graders and three operators down there, but now we're down to like two operators and one grader, I see. So how are we ever going to catch up when we're going down on manpower in the lower end? I don't quite get it. And I see that grader going up and down from one end of the county to the other like a company car. Why don't we start at one end of the county and work our way so we don't waste so much travel time? It's always on the road. I think this year the explanation was that we were, he was working with so much uh, material and so, so uh, long roads up here that he wanted his crew, you know, he was consolidating the crews up here. We talked to him about that. Secondly, um, like uh, last week, he had three crews out and three graders running. Okay, uh, one up here and two down there to try yeah, to cut up. But we were just behind, and that's how we tried to make up for it. Two water trucks, yeah, two water trucks and two graders running down in you know, our end of the country. <coughs> Anybody else? Wanna? I just want to reiterate what I said before about checking in. I'd like to maybe get an opinion on um, Nikki's tractor being used. I mean, you know, there's kind of a fine line, I guess. And then, like you say, it's a small community, and I don't want to beat it to death. But um, I mean, I think some we should get a neutral opinion on if we can, you know, the. I mean, that'd be like if I came to work and hired my own bobcat back, or almost. I mean, is, is that right for Nikki to come to work and then hire his tractor back? Even maybe it's indirectly hired back through a lease deal like some. I mean, I, I just, and I can understand the excuse for the truck when it was the fire season. I mean, that's, you kind of throw shit out the window then. But, uh, to get done what you got to get done when, when stuff like that happens. Well, John, I don't want to start a bigger conversation, <coughs> but I, I'm just going to lay a question out for you, okay? I came from a big county where there were plenty of contractors if you needed them, uh, totally separate from any employees or commissioners or anybody. Uh, and I moved to a smaller county where that's just impossible if you want to use everybody's related to somebody, okay? Right. But Here's the bigger question. We do a lot of things uh, in this county, which actually I'm proud of, but maybe you don't like. For example, uh, every year in the rodeo, uh, you know, a couple rodeos down, we take a water truck down there, a county water truck, okay? And a county employee usually takes it down, and there's other people that, you know, good hands that use it on our grounds, and then we pick it back up. Okay. There have been several uh, That's people. That's personal, though, Bill. Remember. No, I'm just, I'm just asking. If you guys agree, no, I you think know. And second thing is, is that there are people who live in this county that are uh, homebound or are ill enough that the, the ambulance is going to show up two or three times that winter. That lane we're plowing out. We do it on the lake. We do it down here. It's a private driveway, but we plow it. The, we're there anyway, the operator goes in, turns around, plows them back out, so the ambulance can get there, okay? And I can go on and on. The, the loaders parked in hall whatever, once or twice a year in a big snow event. I think it's Mike Foley gets in and plows out all. And it's county equipment and county fuel, all, all that, you know. And like I said, I could go on and on. But a couple of times a year, You'll get somebody with three or four pots full of cattle down in their yard, and they can't get out. And so we sent Mark over there, and there was a load of cattle <coughs> in a truck in haul right there. He drove out, and he put gravel on a private road so we could get a load, you know, these three or four loads of cattle out. I mean, guys, we do this all the time. I mean, and we thought it was just being good neighbors. And... Uh, you know, one neighbor said, well, if you do that for so-and-so, would you do it for me? I said, hell yeah. Try to give as much notice as you can. If 
you absolutely need us, we're going to do that. So that's the discussion maybe we should have, too. Go ahead. Go ahead, Susie. Um, Susie Browning, for the record. Um, I guess, Bart, I'll ask you this question. What is the liability for the county when somebody is using county equipment that is not a county employee? We don't know. Susie, you misunderstood that. We don't know. You said Mike Fo Foley. That, okay, okay, in that case, you're right, but all the other cases, it, it, it's county employees that operate the Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yes, there's a liability. Sure. Yes, yes. So, you know, I think it's great that some of the things you do, but I think you have to think about liability. Yes, ma'am. Because that could cost the county. And I'm liability. just being honest with you. I think, yeah. you know, we, we've done those things in a small community just to keep the small community, uh, you know, functional. Yeah, provide the service. And you're right, we have a great community, and as such, all kinds of rumors get going. And there is one that I heard that I would like to ask Scott, um, and it was at uh, the retirement party for Ed Short and Kath Kane, and someone asked Scott about the millings that got put on his driveway. And I've heard that it wasn't answered in such a, uh, well, pretty negative way. Is that true, Scott? Can no. you tell me what you replied? I well, mean, it depends. There was three or four people asked me, and I just said I really want to forgive my language. I said I effed up. That's a negative answer. Okay. Oh, yes, okay. I did. And I That's... said I effed up, and there's no excuse for it. I don't know how to make it any better. i serious. I effed up. That's what I That's did. what you said. Okay. And then the one guy was literally, he got right in my face, and he was... Okay. No, I just I just had heard that that you had said that you were a commissioner and you could do no, for the, I and didn't. You, you didn't. Okay. I did not. You did not say that. You could do anything you wanted. You've been a commissioner for seven years, so you could do it. Not to be yes. okay. All right. Like I said, our community we hear lots of lots of things get going. And so that's the way you find out is okay. you ask. No, no, so, I never. Go ahead, Elena. Oh, thank you. Elena Gagliano, for the record. Um, I think it's very honorable of you to apologize, to admit that you did wrong. Scott effed up, as you said. I think it's very admirable. However, what you're talking about, answering to um, Susie, the, about the liability. What about if these employees had an accident while they were doing your personal work? That's a question and something to think about. The other thing is when you were doing all those honorable things for the county helping out, uh, did you have a meeting? When you had the rodeo, did you have a meeting? Was it on the agenda that you discussed this and no. you made an agreement? The one night, because they were supposed to, I didn't mean anybody in. The one night I had a guy call me because his friend couldn't show up with a water truck and he just begged that he could take the water truck over there as they've done before. And I said yes. Well, not, you're not supposed you represent the people here. You also are in charge that of the taxpayer, excuse me, I've got the floor, floor. taxpayers' yeah. money. And, you know, when you handle a, a a meeting like this, something else that <laughs> agendas aren't even put in the newspaper. That's an open meeting. Public participation. You don't get up during when you do have a meeting and walk out of the room or have your little conversations. I've been to your meetings. It's amazing how they're handled. Apparently there's still not any difference. You make it sound like you've been doing all these things, using equipment, for personal reasons, county equipment, employees for personal re uh, reasons, you've done it before, you admitted it, and it seems like now you're very apologetic because you got caught. You are representatives of the people of this county. You may have a good heart, that's very nice of you, but you're using county equipment and also employees that the people pay taxes for. I mean, if I was a bank robber 
I robbed a bank, and then all of a sudden I got caught. I said, well, I was going to do all good things with the money. On second thought, I'm sorry, I'll pay it back. My behind would be sitting in a cell somewhere. And I agree with this lady back here. I think you should both resign. And I think there should be an indictment. And then we can take it from there. Thank you. So I want to explain one thing about uh, the issues. Every, uh, in fact, if you look at this agenda and every agenda, essentially prior to county road supervisor, uh, we on Tuesdays, the first thing on the agenda is road and bridge superintendent Paul Hall, we do report, okay? Uh, everybody is welcome to come in, and that's actually where those things get discussed. Hey, I'm going to uh, use, uh, you know, uh, county road or water truck for the road, you know, things like that. Or, or I've got a request to, or one of the commissioners got a request that we talk about and, and get to all. That's when that's all discussed, and that's why it's there. Um, you know, we welcome other contractors with expertise, for example, Lawrence. You know, if we're doing something and you see, what the heck are they doing on, you know, I don't know, uh, Maxville Road, come on up and talk to us. That's the time to do it. Because the, the supervisor, you know, who has the expertise, and you, and we can sit down and certainly at least explain to you what we're doing. If we can't, maybe we can work out some other deal. Um, if time goes by and the roads get dusty or it's pothole or you're, come on up at that time. Because three commissioners can make a decision, right? Not two, not catch us in a bar, don't <coughs> catch us in a grocery store. That's what usually happens to me. I go in and out, but I can't make that decision, okay? We'll have to meet. We set that side of time specifically because we knew a lot of folks, that's the issue, it's a road, and that's fine. But we have Paul here and three commissioners, and your expertise, you know, you can change our mind. It isn't like it's said, but we want to hear from you. We encourage you to come up and talk about maybe there's a better way to skin this cat. You certainly have lived here forever, you know, uh, you know what the consequences of something that we're doing and you can discuss it with us at that time. So that's why we did that, okay? And we're hoping that we you know, have you guys come up uh, during that period of time, okay? And it's the first thing on the agenda, 9 o'clock every Tuesday. And we, unless Paul's really in the middle of something, we require <coughs> I got another question for you. Long as you bought that little piece up. So like, Paul called me up because I was complaining about my road. And he called me up and he drove, he asked, came up and drove it and called me up and said, you're right, your road's crap. He says, I'll, uh, he says, I'll, I'll get back to the commissioners and see if I can gravel it. So why doesn't Paul actually have a budget where he knows how much gravel? If we're paying for a supervisor, why doesn't he know how much gravel he has, how much money to spend on roads so he can decide? I mean, the guy that knows what roads need to be worked are the guys that are grading it, not you two. So why does he have to? If he's our supervisor, and he's out, and we're paying him to be, why does he have to call YouTube to say, well, hey, I want to gravel this little stretch of road. I didn't quite understand that one. Good. No, that's a good question. And here's what it is. Paul's just getting familiar with his budget, where the gravel comes from, where the money comes from, how he can spend, what, you know, he's just, we're working with Paul. I personally am working with Paul to get him to know his budget. He has been, he, you know, he has that authority. He could have said, I'm going to do it. But he came in and said, you know, it's going to be so many, I can't remember what he said, uh, yeah. cost of materials. And uh, Lawrence is right, that road is crap. And uh, going to make a difference. Uh, I, that's what way up on my priority list. I won't just get it done. I won't knock it out. He said, okay. I mean, he so he's just new enough, I think, Lawrence, that he, he wants to, you know, make sure he's not doing something. I would do that, too, if I was a new employee, okay? And he also, he comes from private business, and what we're trying to teach him is, or I'm certainly as well on a budget, how uh, government has to function. That's all there is to it. But, you know, he came to us and said, this is what I want to do, and this road needs to be. We said, okay, you know, how much? We had that conversation, of course, but uh, no, I think it's because he's new. He's learning. Anybody else? 
Dick Mata. Uh, do I understand uh, the commissioner right? You're saying that you violated uh, the open meeting laws and you also violated uh, the uh, um, or misappropriated uh, public funds, but you're just saying this was a stupid thing to do and you're apologizing. I don't know how we violated the open meeting laws necessarily, but how specifically. Well, the meeting, the meeting that you had to discuss uh, Mr. Albers' uh, uh, paving of his road wasn't conducted at well, a public meeting. Well, yeah, it was. We were, there was a public meeting with Mr. Albers. When, when was the public that, meeting? During that period of time. We can go back and give you the date, but here's, here's what I'm saying. Uh, we didn't take action because we wouldn't have taken action, you know, Mr. Chairman, or make a vote. We don't do that on every road thing. We're not going to. What yeah. we did, where we, where we made a mistake, is the location of the test. We were going to do the test. We were going to have those employees haul that, uh, those millings. We were going to have uh, equipment out there to work them down to see if we could make this stuff. We were going to do that. By the way, that was Paul's decision. And I want to do a test before I want to make a mess on the road. But we were going to do that, so uh, that's not something where, you know, we were going to take a motion and actually have it in the minutes. The second part of the question was, no, it was That's done a right violation here. of the open meeting. Model. Why? It was done right here, during the meeting. Why, how, can you, how can you say that it's a meeting uh, when it's not? It's not a public meeting. It was a public meeting. It was done on a Tuesday, <coughs> noticed. That, that with the county road supervisor, notice road bridge superintendent Paul. Was it nine o'clock? Was it put in the paper? No. Was it? No. That discussion wasn't part of the agenda or in the minutes. Uh, no, it was a so, discussion with the county road supervisor. Well, I mean, there, there's no requirement for it to be in the newspaper. Yes, there is. The law says yeah. that it be posted. I disagree with you on that. I disagree with you on that. Well. Uh, well, what, one more thing here. Uh, how much are you reimbursing the county for for the uh, paving of the driveway? I got two bids, and I took the highest one. The one guy was just a verbal bid, and the other person was, was, uh, came to $1,450. Really? <laughs> Shadow asphalt, they looked at it. When are you going to do that? It's already been paid. Has it? Yeah. It's paid last Friday. So the commissioners aren't admitting that they violated the law. So the Montana Attorney General's office is reviewing it and we get their decision. Yeah, you have no idea when you're going to get that decision? I hope soon, but yeah, I don't. So you're not going to do this anymore, uh, and you're not going to admit that it is a violation of the law, and so... Uh, I'd have to defer to the lawyer whether or not it's a violation of the law. But, yeah. Does it arise to official misconduct? That'll be what the Montana Attorney General's office gives me opinion. Susie. Susie Browning, for the record. Um, I'm sure all three commissioners are aware of open meeting laws. Two people make a quorum, mm -hmm. either if it's here or anywhere, and you're discussing county information. Um, I glad you're meeting with the road supervisor up here. Um, I guess weekly. Um, I think he gets paid good money. He's making $70,000 salary. Um, I notice he's driving a new pickup. I'd like to know if that's in the minutes when you decided to make those expenditures of road department money. Mean, it is, road. it is in the yeah, minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I just, you know, I know it was like $61,000 and, and you got two new pickups. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And where did the other new one go? It's go up to here in Billsburg. Up here in Billsburg, so Ron Graham has it. Yes. It's a it's a crew yeah, truck, and it was nice. big enough instead of taking three pickups to a job, we could put a crew finally in one truck and you know, that's what we did. 
Is the other thing is I have been told that a county employee is getting a ride with the road supervisor to work. Is that true? I think I think Nikki has a couple times, but he's also dropped in to bring equipment to the other the county. They're doing okay. This I, may, uh, no, I just was, yeah. This may be strange, but what we had when I first came here, we had a crew here and we had a crew there. Right. Never should the two meet. Nor the equipment. Paul stopped out and said, I got a crew. If I need all of them to the haul, I'm going to use all of them to haul. If I need them all of them at the lake, I want all of them to be at the lake. If I need part of them, you know, see what I'm saying? And he's got people working with other people that had never worked together before. And, uh, you know, he's trying to build a county crew, not two separate crews. That's what he's trying to do. A build a team that work together and uh, work efficiently. That's what he's trying to do. And as you remember, they they would never even share equipment. Oh, yeah. well, just, yeah, to some extent. I, mean, was, I know there was a problem, but I think the road department has worked together. You know, I know um, when Rock Creek was chip sealed, those were, I mean, everybody was down yeah, I mean, it's that right just happened, so. Be efficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I just, you know, I'm hearing things. That's how I find out is if I ask. Uh, that looks like it's just talking about the millings. Does that not include man hours or equipment use? The 1450? It says spread, hauling. So that's not the one that this, that's not the paper that we were sent around. It's it just says back. it's just three and Sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm just asking again. I thought it this is just a copy of the one that already went around, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Andy, did you? Yeah. I want to talk about the millings again. A lot of people have this perception about millings. They think they bring Mike, you think you're getting a regular paving job. Nothing could be further from the truth. As far as I'm concerned, they ought to tell the state to keep their millings when they resurface the highway. If you're going to go out and prep a road right to put millings on, it's going to cost the county way more money to actually do that right. To go out, you, first, you've got to go out and prep that road. If you're going to get those millings and put them on it, well, they turn hard. Try to get them hard. They're never going to be like regular hot asphalt. You'll lay them out there. There'll be places they'll get kind of hard, and then they're going to be soft and kind of crumbly here and there because they don't have the oil in them. That's been dried out, kind of wore out over the years. If you're going to come in and prep the road right to do that, you got to bring a crew in. You got to pull your ditches, get your road crowned up. You got to get a geotech firm, bring them out there, and make sure you have at least 95 percent proctor compaction underneath. Because if you don't have that hard, what your subgrade is is what's going to print through on top. And you lay those millings down, you better have a, a really good sub base built underneath to hold them. And then when you get done laying them, you got to come in and chip seal them. You've got to seal the top of that, otherwise the water's going to penetrate that because that stuff's coarse. About a year or two's time through the winter, the water sinks down into it, it freezes, it starts heaving it, starts crumbling. Then how do you patch it? Then you got another expensive problem. You've got to go haul in asphalt, put a patch, you can't go out and blade it. If you just have a gravel road, it's easy to maintain. If it's done right, go out, pull your ditches, put a good roller behind it, a big grater, and I've in the past, I've talked to the commissioners about, they've asked me questions about maintaining roads. I've played a lot of roads. And you got to go and you got to have a big grader. You cut that road hard. You cut your bumps out, your chuck holes, your stutter bumps, that I call them. You lay that back in hard. And a lot of these roads, you only have to grade them once a year. And I don't care how much traffic it has on it. If it's done right, a good gravel road. But then it's easy to maintain. If I got a road, the county road right across from our place, we drive it every day. Several years ago, Riverside contracting, they resurfaced the highway down there, Interstate 90. And they come over there and they blasted a bunch of that in there on top of that road, no prep. And it's a miserable thing. Right now, the county, and they've asked me, does your road need bladed? I say, no, just leave it alone. There's nothing. It's kind of hard here and it's soft there. Then you get a chuck hole and you reach out with a grader, you try to pull that in to blade it, and you're pulling up hunks and chunks. And then you got that to try to work back and forth. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, those millings are. If somebody wanted to take them, they offered to take them, and even if the county had to haul them away, I'd say it was a 
a bargain for the county myself. It's, they're nothing but a maintenance nightmare. It's never ever going to be a, a paving job. And to go in there to, to try to prep a road, it costs the money way more money to prep it the way it should be before, because they just take them out. When they're in a hurry doing these overlay projects, they're in a hurry. You got a bunch of jippo trucks and company trucks, and they're just blasting her on there. And what's underneath is what you're going to have on top. Because if you don't prep it, and it costs the county a lot of money to go in there and get those roads prepped ahead of time to be ready for that. So that's, you know, I just want to, some other things I can't say about, but that's just a, you know, I've been around those millings quite a bit and done a lot of road work over the years. If you don't, you know, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a, a big expense to the county. Gravel's, you know, a lot cheaper way to go, I think, because everybody's, millings are, are not hot asphalt. Thank you, Andy. Anybody else? I guess I see this thing here with uh, Dan Villa. With the price fourteen fifty still, I guess I don't see where the price for the equipment was. It was just an estimate that I could get from him. He just said I told him I was there, and he just he didn't come. Okay, I guess my question is then. Uh, I've been around a lot of crews. I kind of know what crews cost to do work per day and that. So, how many days did this take? He said right about five hours. Five hours, okay, so you figure one day with travel time and everything. So, at $1,400 a day, and you had all that equipment and all those people, that doesn't even pay for one guy. <laughs> By the time you pay their wages, their show up time, their benefits for the day, which everybody has, I mean, go try to hire a dozer for a day and see how much that alone costs. I'm just saying, I don't, I think it's out of line. And the reason I'm saying all this is because we can't, you know, taxpayers at the lake, we don't get a lot up there. And I feel that we should get some stuff and if we can pay all this kind of money for stuff, we should be able to get stuff up there. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate what you guys do up there now. Not. By any means do I not appreciate that, but I think that estimate's way under. Susie. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Adler should reimburse the Granite County for all of the salary of his employees and the and the amount of money that was used in the club. And and then we start talking about you staying here. But I think uh, that fourteen fifty is is not that's how I feel. Susie Browning, for the record. Um, what is the reason that you paid this on Friday, Scott? Um, was that just to rectify the situation? He made the promise that he would do it and, and kept his promise. I guess I, I, if you guys have some issues with that uh, uh, bid, I think then uh, I mean, you've got to have some type of person to come in and say that it's not not right. I mean, I don't fourteen fifty from a neutral uh, uh, company. I don't see how you can argue with that. But we used our employees. We should get the money back. That the employees had to, that the county paid. But that, that asphalt company is saying that's the fair market value of putting new asphalt on that on the driveway. Okay, so if I go and get a bid, or am I misinterpreting that? If I go get a bid for the milling or millings, new millings on. Fine. So if I go get a bid, and some company says we can do that, we can use the company uh, county employees, trucks, and everything to put it down, but we'll pay for the material. That's what you're saying. No, I'm saying that they're what they're going to give is the fair market value of what that benefit is, and so we have to have another uh, another company to come in and say that that's wrong. I mean, that, to, for us just to say, oh, I don't don't agree with that, you have to have some basis for what you're saying. What I'm saying, the basis is you use county employees and equipment, correct? 
to, to put this down to start with. Am I correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, why shouldn't he pay for the time that the county employees and equipment were used? You can. I mean, I guess. No, I, I'm just bringing this up because you, you, if it's used, that's a cost to the taxpayers. But how is getting an estimate from a, a company to come in and do it any, any, any different from that? Did they actually look at the job, figure the truck mileage? I mean, they uh, figured the truck mileage is from verbal. Maybe you 40 get a, minutes around? Huh? 40 minutes around? I don't know. How many loads? They'll save a lot of money. <clears throat> the trucks they come with, they're going to haul almost double the amount of material that the county trucks going to haul. They have in dump trucks, just a regular in dump that hauls 17 ton. They bring a side dump or belly, they're gonna be bringing 28 ton. You got right here, 45 ton, you got two small trucks. So you got, you run the truck out to Missoula. You're about from where they're at out there. I know where the place is out by the Y. And you're gonna have to, on, the out, probably, on the outside edge, you can, four hours of truck time and there, two hours out back of two trucks. And that would be kind of generous the truck time because I've hauled that lot. They're gonna run there, they got a little old, what they call a Huber grader, a little tractor, a little blade, they'll run that out there, and a roller, a little roller on that, you know. I'd say it's 1450 for a private company. And I know there's shadow asphalt, they did a job for us this spring. And they don't, they don't pay cheap. <laughs> I know that thing. You know, that, as far as a private company doing this, they're basically giving the millings away because they can't, they get them down there and stuff and the millings are garbage basically. One more thing I guess for me and I guess I'm done. Instead of all this hearsay, should we have done this, should we have done that, I guess the easy way to solve this problem and see if it's right, wrong, or what should be done, is this have the Attorney General come in do their study, say yes, this was right, or no, this is wrong, and go from there. We made that request, and so okay. uh, I That'd agree, be the I easy agree. way. It, I mean, he'd say what's right, what's wrong, and if it's right, great. If it's wrong, then it's wrong. So my letter actually went to Brant Light, who's uh, over prosecution services, so I'm not, okay. not doing that. <coughs> yeah, I'm fine with either way, whatever they say. Wayne, on that letter, did you put in, I mean, I, I just, you know, and with, you know, the county employees having their equipment leased back to the county indirectly or directly, is that part of that letter? So I, I did not did not put that in there. Um, I agree with you, the county's got to avoid the appearance of conflict there. The, uh, so, and the, that could be, be brought up to them. That, that uh, from what Bill said, though, those facts, I don't, I mean, I will let the, we can let them look at it. Lane, do you, I'm sorry, do you have a copy of your letter? Uh, yes, I do. Can you get a copy of it? You know, uh, um, I don't believe that's a public document. Wayne, was that a request for an investigation in that letter that you sent? Correct, yeah. Okay. And Anyone in here is welcome to call Brant Life to assure if you have any issues with that letter being sent. It got sent. Well, it involves county employees, um, elected officials. I don't see why it's not public. Well, it's a request for investigation. I believe that's a, a public document. So, so I just want to, Mr. Bill. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I just want to. You know, I don't want to misunderstand as far as I feel about this. Okay? I'm a big boy, I know right from wrong. There wasn't anything right about this, okay? And I'm not, we're not trying to make excuses and talking about the um, uh, testing and the stuff. That's something we're going to do. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it again, probably, okay? But where it went is wrong. Got it. We, you know, loud and clear, you're not going to get an excuse for me on that, okay? Or, or the other commissioners that I, okay? It was wrong. So don't be confused here. We're not, I'm not trying to minimize exactly right from wrong. I know what's right and wrong. This was wrong. You know, was it criminal? Don't know. Find out, I guess. But 
That's exactly what okay. I mean. you, I know you, you guys know what's right. You guys, as, <coughs> you guys as taxpayers, let's be really clear. You got my apologies. Okay. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're better than this as a community. So, there you go. Yeah, yeah. My name is Matt People. Um, I just wanted to point out that I, I appreciate that not one person has ever said that there's an excuse for this. I appreciate the honesty. Um, for all the bad that's been said, I'd like to bring out something good that happened this last week. And that was that there was trimming that needed to take place up Rock Creek. And Scott Adler come to me and asked if this was something that the close-up kids would want to do because my wife and I are the close-up advisors. That was a smart decision. That saved the county probably half of what it would have cost them to bring a contractor out of Missoula. They probably saved them somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three thousand dollars and kept that money local to help some kids go on a trip that some of them it might be the only time they ever even leave the state of Montana. Not everything that happens in this county is bad. And when Scott asked me if we would be willing to do that, you bet we're willing to do that. At which point he directed me to Paul Alt, who helped to organize the whole thing. And it was a great little deal that went off without a hitch. And that's really going to help those kids to be able to do something good. And I appreciate that. I want to realize I know what you're going to tell. Yeah, These yeah. two were involved in it, too. It wasn't just okay. I can see that coming. Why do you assume that, Susie? I mean, the your county, eyes you're in the county road right, right away. We talked about liability. I support close up. I think close up. But don't assume wonderful. they're doing things wrong. I mean, we have. Yeah. It's in the minute set. So if anything last happens, last okay. Last three okay. years okay. to close okay. up. Okay. No, that's great. We pay, we close up's a wonderful program. We pay more gun shirts over the Close up's a wonderful program. I think that's great. I'm Thank glad you. it's kosher. That's great. I appreciate that's the good. effort and the opportunity for those kids to earn something yeah. and to keep some of that tax money local, some of which is taxes that I've paid. That's that's good. Good. Thank you. Anybody else uh, have anything to share with us? I, I do have one question. Yes. Um, in talking to both uh, Bill and Scott uh, last week, uh, you guys both kind of indicated that during the conversation where you were trying to find a place to do the test, you just kind of left it up in the air. So who uh, who eventually made the call that they were going to go to Scott's house and do this? Not me, because I had the dozer there. I'll take it. Me. So, I mean, you said, Paul, let's get this done. And I guess because I wasn't going to sue the county. Okay. And it did kill a bunch of our grass, and we ran over a phone box, and, you know, so, I mean, and then you go down there and look, and there's big chunks of rubber all of a sudden coming up. And, and just, Where's the rubber come from? Then you go in, and they cut it off the highway, and went down too deep, and then they took the, some of that crack, see what the Lawrence said? And the dude said that? I didn't say that. Anyway, there's a pretty big You know what, I'm going to have to over your bone box and do an Adam down there. <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said it. I don't know. I did. Yeah, I want to it. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I really appreciate you guys coming in and uh, uh, sharing with us what you uh, had to share. I, I just wish I would have been uh, invited into the conversation because I sure would have vetoed it. One more, more thing, Dad. What? Mark, I got one more thing. That day they were doing it, and they started with it. I come to draw it real nice. Saw a truck in there, I saw another come there and stuff, saw it, and I thought, well, I'm glad he's taking it. I thought, you sure glad they're not putting that on our road over there, because it'd be nothing but a maintenance nightmare. So it's a good, that looks like a good place to waste it, as far as I was concerned. So, you know, I'm not here to get the or something like that, but to me it looks like it just a, I'm glad it wasn't being put on our stretch counter. Oh, 
Well, John Long, we were stuck there for three days because they plowed uh, black pine, but they don't buy our road. So maybe you guys can do something about it. There's a bunch of elderly people living down there. Yep, yep. come in. Uh, you know, anytime you're welcome on Tuesdays, we'll talk about that. Uh, oh. Yeah, no, I just did right well, now. Well, especially, <laughs> especially somebody that's homebound or injured or elderly, you know, we don't know where all these people live. Yeah, the thing is, there's rules that you have to comply by. And I know this is a small town, but you have to comply by them. And the Somebody's stranded, we're going to try to help if you're trying to find a resident. You know, no, you don't have that. to stop it. Okay. Just do it as a public for a public meeting. Yeah. You can discuss whatever you want. The date that you supposedly d discussed this, you can say it was any day, any Tuesday. Because at 9 o'clock, actually, you do the Pledge of Allegiance at 9 o'clock, supposedly. But at any Tuesday, you talk about the roads, right? Yes, so you can, and it's not on the minutes. Yes, That's it another thing. No, it, it oh, is. it was on the minutes. No, you said it, it wasn't. No, I'm saying okay. the discussion with the road supervisors on in the minutes and on the agenda. But not the discussion that you guys had about doing this. At the specific place. discussion, like if you came in and said, hey, I need somebody to plow a road or something like that, we wouldn't know that's even coming. But that's the time for it right there. That's, that's all I'm saying. Have the August minutes been approved? Not yet. May I request a draft copy of them, please? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Remember, you don't give out. We got a attorney no, general opinion on you'll that get, one. You'll get a final. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, okay. You'll get a final. You'll get a final. That's approved. Okay. Yeah. See, this is new, Susie. Okay. All right. I'm all sorry. I'm not happy. You could. No problem. Okay. Hey, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. We'll see you.